Okay. <clears throat> Evening, everybody. It is um, Monday, August the 12th, uh, 7.06 p.m., and this meeting of the Wellington Sustainability and Energy uh, Committee will come to order. Um, how's everybody doing? Okay. <laughs> well, aside from um, uh, more months of uh, public benefits payments to Eversource, I'm doing fine. That's why I love my solar bill. <laughs> Guess how much I paid in public benefit charge last month? Uh, it should be $48. It is zero. <laughs> I paid nothing. You dug. I banked, I banked a couple of hundred kilowatt hours for the winter. Yeah, well, mine were banked, but I still need done, right? Say again? Pardon me? That means that you're not paying either, Don. I I right. gotta take a look at my bill. I thought I got a, a public benefits charge, but I looked at ever I looked at Button Hill bill, so now I'm confused in my mind. I usually pay a public benefits charge. Well, if, um, if you got it, then I'm dropping a dime on John. <laughs> if you um if your solar power system produces more electricity than you use, Don, then you're not paying a public benefits charge. You're not paying uh, any. You're not paying any kilowatt hour charges. Um, if you produce more than you use, public benefit charge on three hundred thirty-three kilowatt hours, two dollars and sixty-four cents. Yeah. That was for right. delivery, and wow. that wasn't a split bill either. I don't think so. But but that's a situation where your solar power did not produce more than you used. You had you had consumption over and above what your solar power system did. No, so that's why you're paying your public benefits charge. He's got electric supply. Electric electric supply service is zero dollars. Delivery service is twelve dollars and eleven cents. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I owe them amount due on six seventeen was a minus five hundred and fifty six dollars. So I still got money in the bank anyhow. Um, yeah, well, that's current, what you're, you, you, you're, you're not paying a public benefit charge. Current net build usage, zero. But public benefit charge on 333 kilowatt hours, which is kind of odd because that's maybe what I purchased and probably sold them a thousand kilowatt hours. Um, that was uh, $2.64. So I mean that's that's nothing, I understand, but it's not yeah, quite. It, it, when when you look at what happened to people where their bills doubled, a lot of people are screaming, "Hey, what happened? My electric bill doubled uh, this year." Um, a big part of the problem is climate change. Um, the uh, first three weeks of July were unbearably hot, yeah. and uh, everybody cranked, everybody kept their air conditioners on, and they they likely used a whole lot more power um, than they did in June, which was remarkably cool, you know. So, yeah. um, you know, that, that's what's going on with why people's bills were doubled. It's not so much the public benefit charge, although the public benefit charge is part of it. Um, there's three components to that public benefit charge. There's the um, assistance for low-income individuals uh, who uh, uh, can't afford electric and uh, their electric bill. They, there's two classes there. Some people get a 50% discount. Some people get like 10%. Um, and so the money has to come from somewhere, and that's part of the public benefit charge. Um, another part of the public benefit charge is to um, pay off the uh, accounts that couldn't be terminated due to COVID. When they uh, when COVID hit, they shut off the uh, they put a moratorium on uh, uh, electricity shutoffs for people until uh, the the recovery was well underway. Um, hmm. And so those those uh, bills are also due now, and they have to be paid. But the the lion's share of uh, the public benefit charge right now, the the big part of it is the um, Millstone three uh, payments. Um, we uh, in twenty seventeen, I think um, the owners of Millstone three came to the legislature and said, "Look, guys, uh, we're going to shut down um, if if we don't get a long term contract uh, for the purchase of our power." And so the um, they got the long term contract that they needed. Um, and uh, at times when um, Electricity is expensive. Uh, the contract works great for for them and for the state and for the ratepayers. Uh, at times when electricity is cheaper, like right now, uh, the the which called the actual supply rate came down. But with electricity being cheaper, 
um, the, that's, there's still a burden there that has to be met. And that's what's going on is it's like $600 million or something that has to be uh, recouped um, for, uh, by the utilities. And so that's, that's where the public benefit charges, the ma majority of it, like 80% of it is made up by the Millstone three payments. Mm. Um, you know, the other, the other two parts are, uh, both, you know, laudable goals. You got, uh, uh, people who can't afford electricity, getting some help. You got people who, uh, you know, went through the shutdown moratorium and that needs to be taken care of. So those, those two things are, you know, that's a good public benefit. The Millstone three thing, yeah, it's a public benefit because it kept 1,500 jobs uh, you know, and, and, uh, and it kept uh, uh, electricity base load, base load power uh, being generated right here in the state. So uh, two good things about that, but it's expensive. And that's where, you know, uh, average uh, uh, electricity users saw like an $80 spike in their public benefit charge on this last bill. And they no, weren't no. like no, Eversource doesn't even own Millstone anymore, does it? No, it doesn't. The, the owners of Millstone came and said, "You uh, Eversource and um, UI, uh, they both have to buy power from us at this set rate for the next 10 years or we're shutting down. And the legislature put it through. Um, and it wasn't, you know, a lot of people like to scream it was the Democrats. It was Democrats and Republicans uh, who, who put that through. And that contract began in 2019 and it goes through 2029. Um, and there's nothing we're going to do about it. So. But we digress far away from our Wellington <laughs> sustainable and energy uh, agenda. Don, what do you have on the agenda today? Well, it's not that far a, a, a field of of our subject matter uh, and the agenda. Yeah. Um, actually, I got my notes in front of me. Let me let me open up the. I have the agenda here somewhere. I know I do. Agenda for wise. Okay. Uh, and next time I do it, somehow I won't put the link with a item number one in front of it. I don't know how that happened, but anyhow, I'm glad you're both <laughs> here. I couldn't, I couldn't use that link. I had to go back to the one I got from Shannon. So, anyhow, call to order. Um, and then we got present to speak is up next. Um, and I don't see anybody here for that. Um, the and then we get into old business. So I'll just carry on with it. Um, discuss the status of Downey's renewable energy presentation email to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, and basically, should I again approach Selectmen about Downey's renewable energy presentation and the PV email I sent to First Selectman Peter Tanaka on 613 with a follow up email to him on 711 uh, that also included an inquiry about how the town acquired free CEN fiber optics. Uh, well, uh, with regards to both of those emails, I haven't heard anything. With regards okay. to looking at uh, Selectman's minutes, I haven't read anything. With regards to looking at um, uh, correspondence, I haven't seen anything in their minutes. Okay, um, I, I did send um, our letter about heat pumps um, to um, the board, I sent it to Shannon, and she shared it with the board. Um, I also sent it to the um, chair of the um, Board of Finance uh, and asked him to share it with his board. Um, Shannon said that um, she would see if she could get me on the agenda for um, August 19th, a week from tonight. So if I can get on that agenda, um, then we should also bring up um, your correspondence with them, Don, at the same time. Yes. And I was thinking about going to them because uh, one of the items to discuss um, was the update on the Button Hill PV batteries and uh, and PV and, and the possibility of locating some PV on the septic system area. Um, and I didn't know, John, if you had any familiar in Mass familiar Massachusetts or Connecticut with people putting septic on PV. When I brought it up to the Green Bank, uh, Katie Shelton, she sounded um, unclear if it was possible or not, and she was going to speak with their consultants. The, the only thing you'd want to do is you want to make sure that you're not blocking any access to the um, to the tank. If the tank needs to be replaced, um, you know, the, the, the septic tanks are, are giant concrete blocks these days, but they, they do wear out. Um, well, especially... and, and, okay, go ahead. 
Yeah, but just, you know, especially if you're using water softeners, a lot of people run their water softener uh, effluent right into their septic tank, which is a really stupid thing to do. Uh, that's the way my house was plumbed when I bought it. We fixed that. We put in a separate dry well for the water softener um, because that the, the salt will dissolve your, your tank. So you got to be careful from that perspective that if the tank needs replacing, you, what are you going to do? Dismantle the solar and uh, and replace it. Um, if the um, if, if you're talking about it's a leaching field and it goes way back, um, way beyond the tank, you probably got plenty of space where you wouldn't need to be over the tank. Um, and I, I don't I don't see any problem with doing that. OK, OK. I, I didn't think there was a problem other than the fact that it's not in our leased area. Uh, and it's on town land. So that's probably one of the things I will try to uh, put together and organize and bring before the selectmen so they can start their um, hemming so it you on. Guys are, you guys are thinking of a ground mounted system to provide most of your electricity or all of your electricity? Uh, if possible. I'm thinking that uh, if, if we tell them we're going to put in heat pumps, uh, we get to boost our allowable level of solar we can put on. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking about doing it on the roofs, doing it to the west of our Button Hill buildings, doing it to the north of our Button Hill buildings. But there's not a lot of room there. Uh, and I think yeah. the more solar we can do, the more thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars we can generate. And yeah, uh, yeah. if the, we get the, the, only heat pumps, caution, the only thing I'd caution is a lot of people don't like the appearance of ground mounts. They uh, depending on what you're mounting them on, they can look like hell. Um, yeah, pole, pole mounts are probably your nicest ones. They're also probably the most expensive ones. Um, you know, for for a pole mount, you want to get uh, like a a four foot wide sonnet tube six feet into the ground, and you fill that with concrete, and you put the pole in there and uh, get it nice and uh, you know level and square and true, uh, and then you can mount the solar panels on it. Um, and those ones probably look the best because there's just one single pole um holding them up but then the other other situations are they have these giant metal racks that you put them on and you know it almost looks like you got a, a set of bleachers uh set up in your side yard with uh with solar panels on it you know um, yeah a lot of people will complain about that yes I'm using screening in front of the array you know low mounted screening like like oh, yeah like, yeah like, like trees or whatever you know yeah, you can try to hide it. Um, you don't want to shade it though, too. You don't, you know, you want, no, like you don't want to, to keep to keep down the the um the presence. The yeah, visual presence. Just on the hedge or you know, ivy covered fence or something just to just yeah. to mask. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a lot you can do to to dress it up and 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 uh, keep it from being an eyesore. But this that that's one thing that people mm -hmm. will complain about. Is that you know? I mean, some people say uh, no. I don't want solar around my house because I, I hate the way they look. Uh, you know, as if asphalt shingles are pretty or something. I don't know. That's, hey, you're talking <laughs> to Bill. That's his. That's his position. <laughs> <laughs> and what what is the uh, CEN uh, fiber optic? What was that about? I don't know. I mean, I had read that in their minutes or something that they got free fiber optics from CEN, and I thought I'd ask uh peter tanaka about it but all i get is crickets out of him so far mm. so um i know that he was probably busy with budgets but uh, uh right. um, don I'll, so I'll let you know as soon as i hear from shannon if we're on for the uh, 19th let's both uh, go to the meeting yeah yeah and then i gotta go to planning and zoning and bill probably has to excuse himself because where i want to put him on the ground is um there's a small area that's legal, although we got to ask planning and zoning, legal or not, whether they're going to accept it. And the other ones are to the west of the existing building. For nobody really sees it unless they drive around the loop road. But half of that uh, area is within 200 feet of a setback requirement. So planning and zoning to get involved there, and they'll get involved with the septic area, and the selectmen will get involved with the septic area because it's on their land, land, not within our lease area. So it you know we got a bunch of hoops to jump through there but yeah we're gonna we're gonna try to work with the green bank and have them do an analysis and i don't want to leave it up to their experts to tell us what we can and cannot do i want mm -hmm. to push them as much as i can because it looks like we could you know see 300 to five hundred thousand dollars worth of income over that 20 years so wow. 
Um, and we got a we got a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar balloon payment due in about fourteen years. So um money's money. Yep. So uh, that's where that is. So I'll see I'll put some stuff together for the selectmen. I guess I probably should give Shannon a heads up and let her know that I'm going to attend also. So also okay. I'm on the agenda. Um, okay. So, uh, and well, this, like I said, though, I, I, the, she said she'd try to get me on for the 19th, but I haven't heard from her. So okay. it could, we don't even do this until, um, September. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, hopefully we can get oh, hopefully we can get there. If not, we can get there as president to speak. Probably, that's a wide open. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather have a spot on the agenda. You okay. Know? Yep. President to speak is often not a discussion. It's one person who says a few things at present to speak, and nobody says anything back. That's right. Yeah. So I'd rather be on the agenda. And that's uh, at six thirty, right? Yes, typically six thirty. Yeah. So uh, should I contact Peter Tanaka again and say, what about my email of the. Uh, I'll, I'll go, go to Shannon. Go to Shannon's. Yeah, go to Shannon. She, she handles his calendar. Okay. You know, say, hey, I've been trying to get in touch with Peter. He hasn't been responsive. I'd like to get on the agenda for the 19th if John's going to be there as well. Tell her that. You know? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then should I recontact Ed Degada? Basically, the only reason I contacted him is because he had expressed a desire to do solar on the senior center, and that's a town building. So um, in order to do that, uh, it really has to come from the selectmen, I would imagine. Yeah, I would love, I would love to talk to him. Let's see if we can get him to one of our meetings so that we can help him to advocate for that. I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, so we did the update on Button Hill with a septic area. Um, update on the status of a letter from the town from you, from you, John, uh, which you just yeah, talked about and said that yeah. uh, that's you talked to Shannon. Okay, yeah, it's been sent, um, they've got it. Yep, yeah, item E is discuss the selectmen's posting online. Okay, this is something I noticed. They have a posting online that says, Do you have interest in green energy? Would you like to help the town of Willington reduce our energy costs? Consider joining the Energy Advisory Committee. We have three regular member vacancies. And I think it is first two points there. First, I think it is three vacancies. If we in, keep Pam included on our. Right on our board. active roster. Yeah. yeah and she's willing yeah. to do that. Second thing is they had a .org email address as opposed to a .gov email address for contacting them if you're interested in joining the committee when you click oh, really? on you yeah you click on the application form uh that's one of the options so i brought that to shannon's attention she was going to bring it to peter's attention i actually brought it to tish's attention and tish does web stuff every friday uh, so okay. i'm i'm not sure if i stepped on any toes or not i announced that i didn't intend right, if, to if there's yeah, if there's a mistake, maybe, let's get it fixed. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, I I didn't look yet, but I imagine it's probably fixed because Tish does those kind of things. Okay. Then we got new business. Discuss any new business, including A, setting up a booth at Willington Days, which would be next year, because that's already gone by on May 25th. And yeah. the other one is still, is uh, the one that's coming up Labor Day, getting a booth at the Willington Tax Sale on the green. I couldn't flea find market. any. Yeah, the flea market. I couldn't find any. Well, I look for tag sale, not flea market. So uh, I couldn't find anything online. Well, so I've, maybe I've, I should... I've got uh, I've got information for that from uh, from the Willing and DTC from being on the Democratic Town Committee. The, okay. Uh, do Do we want to set up a booth or join a booth or? Uh, um, do we have anything? I, even I, I, I'm I'm already double booked um, that day. I'm going to be booked at the um, Democratic Town Committee booth, and then um, the Economic Development Committee is having a, a an event at the library from one to four. And um, um, the guy that's putting it on, Ernie uh, Blindberger, um, he asked me to to cover one of the booths as a facilitator, um, okay. the energy booth. So. Um, 
so I'm I'm already double booked. I I couldn't possibly add a third obligation uh, at the flea market. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. I'm reluctant to volunteer, but I could. I'm not booked at this point in time. Um. I, I guess I could talk to Shannon about getting a booth or sharing somebody's booth. Um. Yeah, I don't know if the um. Board of Selectmen is going to have a booth there. I, I have no idea. Okay. Hey, Don. Uh, I, I'll ask Chan if there's any booth I can share. I mean, other, other than the fact I don't want to go out and approach everybody and say, you want to join yeah. our committee. And, and yeah. I'm, I, well, and we, I'm, we certainly could use one or two more people on the committee. Um, right now, we don't have a quorum, right? There's only three of us here out of a seven-person board. I guess that's true. Yeah. I'm not sure how how the quorum is counted. So, um, yeah, that, that's that, that's probably a question for Shannon as well. For who? Bill, for Shannon. Okay. She should know about you know makeup, board makeup, and stuff. Bill, did you have a question you were gonna? Yeah, I was gonna ask Don um, what his intent or or hopes were for having a uh, a tent at the uh, flea market because other than you know, trying to get an additional member or two. Um, there's not much else we could involve them with. You just you know, let them know we right. exist. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know what, what I do. Go ahead. Yeah. That's all I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, that would be the, 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 the thrust of it would probably be, yeah, we need a couple more members and yeah, we exist. Hey, we're, we're a committee. We're working on things. You want to join us? Yeah, I don't even know where to begin presenting something that would grab somebody's yep. attention. You know, we right, don't have. We'd, any... Yeah, we'd want to develop a flyer of some kind, of some some kind of marketing collateral to to hand out. Um, but I I don't know that it's a, that it's that worthwhile, especially um, given it's only like three weeks away at this point, three four weeks. Right. Let's uh, let's table it until springtime. Um, I think Wellington Day might be a better. Uh, something we'd, we'd have more time to plan, right? Yeah. All right. Why don't we look for that for springtime? Okay. I will, uh, I'll ask Shannon the quorum question. I'll ask her whether we can share, whether, whether we can share a booth if we, if we create some material, you know, maybe share the selectors okay. booth or stand off to the side or something. I think that um, would even, or even, yeah. Or even just put something on the table at the selection booth and let, let, let it, let people pick them up if they want them. You know, pick up pick up a flyer. Yeah, the Energy and Sustainability Committee is looking for new members, and yes, put one exactly. of the new application forms that's available online in the yep. pile, and say, you know, okay, I'll come and pick up the, the what's left of these at at three o'clock or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever it ends, sure, sounds. I good. think if we were to, um, you know, just kind of um, verbally build into our interaction with people. Um, Hey, would anybody like to learn more about uh, renewable energy in the town? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the question asked a hundred times might get us a positive response. Right. Might get us to that quorum. Um, other than the fact that, like John said, he had nothing else to add to the agenda. So agendas are getting pretty light. They're uh, getting thin. Huh? <laughs> um. So, and, well, one, I, and thing we, one thing we were talking about was um, trying to see about getting on uh, a list with um, with the power companies to be able to have a place on the grid when we do start making power. You're talking about an application so that we. Well, we were talking about uh, how there's only so many spots or there's a limited ability right you're talking about interconnection of how the how interconnection the, how agreement company thank you take yeah. product from us yeah yeah you're, ta you're talking about interconnection we really can't do anything with interconnection until we have a plan in mind until we have a, a facility that's engineered and ready to be built because they they need to know right down to the to the what um what we're building so are, are there uh, any preliminary know, steps to that no 
Nothing. When, once you have all your ducks lined up, then you go to them. You give them all. You you give them all your information, and then they start the clock on um, getting you approved and 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 uh, giving you permission to construct. Yeah. It would just just uh, it was interesting. I talked to Earthlight about maybe whether they had any interest to get involved in Button Hill, and as soon as I mentioned RFP to them, they said, "Oh, we don't we don't even participate in RFPs." <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work for an RFP and um, uh, uh, very little reward because uh, often people will ask for three or four RFPs from different providers. So, you, you know, you have a one in four shot in the first place. And uh, typically, it, you know, it, it might take a day or two days of someone's time um, to, to respond to an RFP adequately. And so, you know, a lot of work, little reward. Most most places won't do what about yep. the concept of a closed circuit uh, energy production at uh, at the uh, transfer station hill? Yeah, just uh, put in an off grid system at the at the transfer station. Power yeah. power everything there off of batteries. Yeah, or or, right. or use the power, you know, actively if if we had some kind of equipment there. Right. If we if we put in um, what's called composting equipment. Mm -hmm. but uh, that's an interesting take on things um um that that's the circuit that i was telling you that's overloaded so that's that's why we would have to do something like that um, oh, but certainly yeah. that's yeah that that's something we could look into do you, do you want to try and uh, uh contact earthlight see what they would do they're, they're down they're a local uh solar power firm right yeah but the town will still have to rfp it so really it's up to the town to attend a solar map thing and sign up with the green bank it's going to hold their right well yeah them. if we were to sign up with the green bank we could run that by the green bank people and they would help us to get that uh designed and and, and implemented if we wanted to go forward with it right and then that's uh, really up to the selectmen to to, yeah. to at least initiate it and have a discussion on it and probably dump it in our laps <laughs> you know and and there i didn't see too many circuits speaking of that circuit in in our area that's overloaded um i looked at some of their circuitry and i thought it was rather vague what they were saying yeah it uh, it's hard to understand um i i don't I, I've, I've been working in solar power for 10 years and i don't understand how connecticut represents things how eversource connecticut uh represents that those, those substations and stuff on their maps okay yeah, yeah I, I i looked at what it, it was not clear to me you know, yeah, they were it, maxed it's out. entirely, yeah, it's entirely opaque to me too. Uh, it, it's very straightforward in Massachusetts. In Massachusetts, we go out, we put in an application for interconnection. They tell us right off the bat, as soon as we put, put in the customer's account number, they tell us what pole they're connected to, uh, what transformer they're connected to, um, how much uh, solar is already on that transformer, how much room is left on that transformer for additional solar. It, it, we haven't even submitted the application yet, and and we have all that information at our fingertips that we can tell right away. You know, oh, sorry, this is going to require a transformer. You know, there, there's only three kilowatts left, and we got a ten kilowatt system. Uh, then we know that we're going to have to put a transformer into that neighborhood in order to uh, connect up more solar. But we uh, we've never had a problem with adding transformers, so it's not like you know if there's a, a finite amount of uh, room on the circuit, we shouldn't be able to add more transformers willy nilly. Uh, in Massachusetts, we've just been able to do that all the time. I, I don't understand how it happens in Connecticut that we can't. Mm -hmm. you know? So, but yeah. the difference, different grid, different construction, you know, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so we talked about the flea market. We talked about uh, willing today. We'll bring those up in future meetings. Um, and nothing else, it'll pad the agenda a little bit uh correspondence i didn't check the town hall recently but i will when i talk to shannon so far we haven't had ever had correspondence so uh i'm guessing there's nothing there but i'll check and yep. I'll, I'll email you if i find something and we'll discuss it at the next meeting approval of minutes from the prior meeting the only thing i have to add on there was that i didn't um note that member William Bennell was absent at the last meeting. 
So um, uh, we will have to note uh, an amendment to the last minutes. Okay. I'll, I'll move that we um, accept the uh, minutes of the last meeting as written with the addition of uh, Bill Bunnell's absence. Okay. Do we have a second? To include Bill's absence. And I'll second it. Okay. Uh, motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing no. none. A vote. No. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Uh, last item um, is motion to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> uh, John, John uh, moved. I'll, I'll second. All right. Um, and we don't have much discussion on it, I bet. So uh, we'll let the chairman say all in favor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> all right. And it is 737. Go ahead. Thanks, thanks for coming. And I'm going to end uh, recording now. Okay. And if this is going to go up to the cloud, um, Bill, did, 